out and by seniors, giving information to enhance one's quality of life. And of course, speaking of quality of life, there we have our guest today is Dr. Thomas Palucky, a local chiropractor. And what are we going to be talking about other well, than snapping bones? <laughs> well, we don't snap bones. I you know, know that. that. You I know, know that. that. You're trying I, to scare people. No. <laughs> I couldn't resist that. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what most people think when they hear the word chiropractor. But today we're probably going to be talking more about what I do for people with nutrition and supplements and things like that. Uh, we'll be giving a an entire uh, presentation on that. Um, for most of this audience, it's probably best if they actually come to the off office instead of try to see it online uh, because there's so much misinformation out there. And um, unfortunately, your medical doctor rarely has the time to cover these things with you about what mm -hmm. supplements you should or shouldn't be taking. They're more concerned about the side effects you're having from the medications you're currently taking. So we have, a, you know, you, it, there's so much out there. And if you just try to figure it out for yourself, uh, too often you're not going to be getting what you need. And there's so, uh, so many people have opinions about, oh, well, you should be taking this. You know, oh, it's the, you want to avoid the cold and flu, so you should be taking vitamin C, right? Most people think in those terms. That's true. Uh, That's true. It's not that scientifically based. So there are much better options than something like vitamin C. Not that there's anything wrong with vitamin C, but to take it to avoid a viral infection is probably not a, a, a scientifically based strategy. And um, yet people do all the time. Uh, the vitamin D, D3 in particular, which is you know a little bit different than the the D that they put in milk. They fortify milk with D2, which is something, a, a whole different conversation. But D3 is the uh, uh, something called bioidentical. Now, I know that maybe some people have heard of that term before, but that means that is it's a, the molecule of D3 that your body would make on its own. That's what bioidentical means. So we make our own D3 in um, special cells right near the surface of the skin. Mm -hmm. So we will make our own D3 if we're exposed to sun. But so many people are told that they need to avoid the sun, that they mm -hmm. have to stay away from the sun. And if they're out in the sun, they have to put on these creams and these potions that mm, are questionable at best. Uh, nearly all sunscreens have known cancer-causing chemicals in them, nearly all of them. So to think that, first of all, D3 um, is a bad thing, like sunshine is a bad thing, and that you have to put cancer cream, cancer causing cream on your skin to avoid it is a big problem out there. There's a lot of misinformation about that. So as the sun starts staying lower on the horizon and we're just exposed to less and less sunlight over these next four months, well, for two months, for two months, we're going to get less and less. Mm -hmm. And then for two months, it's going to get back to here. But I went out for a walk this morning. And you can already see the sun is hugging the horizon later and later and later. So it's going to be harder to get any kind of good quality sun at all. And um, people are afraid. People are afraid of the sunlight. It's been a trend, an, uh, a trend for the past several decades where doctors tell their patients to avoid sunlight and if they go out in the sun to wear sunscreen and that the sun causes cancer and it it's not based in science in fact most skin cancers cause are outside of the high uh, exposure to sun areas of the world so the the worst forms of skin cancer happen and it away from uh, certainly away from the equator and well into the northern and further southern hemispheres than people who are have regular exposure to the sun and vitamin d3 is one of the best best anti-cancer 
natural supplements there are out there. So it's just I take, uh, so I take D3. Yeah, so much <coughs> of the recommendations out there are just miss. Uh, let's let's give them every benefit of the doubt and just misunderstood and just say that they're, they're if not misunderstood then at least ignoring the actual facts so when okay. barbara says that she takes takes vitamin d3 mm -hmm. and it's bioidentical mm -hmm. when she well, takes d3 it, is automatically bioidentical right so when you take it though how well is it absorbed to try to equalize what your body would have made if you try to stay out of the sun? That's an excellent question. So not all D3, even though it is bioidentical, is created equally. If it is a pill form, if it is a compressed, cap, uh, compressed tablet, the bioavailability is minimal. Now, D3 can be absorbed in the digestive tract, but because it is fat-soluble, it has to go through a special process in the digestive tract. It has to be processed along with all the other fats mm -hmm. that you consume. So when you get a powder compressed pill of D3, I immediately question the quality of the D3 itself. In, in tablet form, there's always a compromise. Mm -hmm. In capsule form, it could be possibly better, but I like liquid D3. And I especially like, now this is a Scrabble word, mycelized D3. So a mycel, is, it's, it means that it's suspended in a little droplet of fat. So that makes it immediately available to your body. Mm -hmm. And so when it's micronized, which means it's made really small, and it's mycelized, which means it's suspended in a fat molecule, then D3 really has some potential. So we see all these recommendations out there where medical doctors are now really looking at this, looking at blood levels of D and saying, wow, this person's really deficient. And they start putting them on varying doses anywhere from 5,000 IU up to 50,000 of an injection at one time. Whoa. And it's just... I don't think that that is the best way to approach D3. If, if, if we lived in a perfect world, you wouldn't need any supplementation. You'd be getting plenty of D3 from your natural diet. You'd be getting plenty of D3 from natural exposure to the sun because we wouldn't spend all day inside covered and then slathered in cancer-causing creams to avoid any exposure. And so... But that's not the way it is. So how do we get closest to that? And it's certainly not in <coughs> this tablet that you buy in bulk rate from Walmart or Costco or whatever. It just doesn't work like that. So a mycelized, micronized D3 formulation is ideal. And the, the one that we carry in our office that, that you take, Barbara, is, is so absorbable that you can put it on your skin mm -hmm. because that's the way D3 is designed to work in your body. It's not designed to have to work its way all through the digestive tract to go through a special loop in the, the fat digestion part of, of that, which means that it's got to go through the liver twice before it can be used because that's how fats are. They don't have the same metabolism as proteins and sugars in your body. And um, so when you're talking about D3, the way that we would make it is in on the surface of our skin. And here's the problem. Here's why there's misinformation about D3 and sunlight and sun exposure. Because most people, when they do get enough sun exposure to actually produce some D3, the first thing they want to do is go wash it off. Like if you've been out in the sun all day, you're, you're going to want to go and take a shower. And the problem with D3 is it's not made, it is, well, it is made inside your skin. It's not absorbed inside your skin. It's secreted out on top of your skin. And then it can take up to 
a day or even two to fully reabsorb back into your bloodstream and be used. Wow, that's mm. So the problem is you get the exposure <coughs> from the ultraviolet, which can cause some damage to skin and even DNA. It is a form of ionizing radiation, which is where cancer comes from. But the automatic protection that nature built into us all we wash away at the first chance that we get. So we get all of the damage and none of the protection. And by the way, D3 is so much better for your skin than any sun cream that you can buy. So the better way to take get D3 is r putting it on your skin or is what Barbara is taking, the mycelized Yes, type. either, either way. Either one. Yeah. So in her, does it say on the bottle, like if you get it from Costco, um, big bottle that says D3, does it say mycelized on it? It probably won't. Um, How do we know? I, well, that, because that's it's just a, a... It's like a caplet that yeah. is not a tablet, and it looks like it's it's clear, mm -hmm. and it, you know, maybe it's fat soluble in there and suspended. It, but how do you how do you know? That's then? just it. I don't buy supplements at Costco. Mm -hmm. um, not not to cause any problems with Costco. I think they're great at certain things they do. Um, but as far as supplements are concerned, I, I don't look for bargains. I don't look mm -hmm. for bargains on supplements. I look <coughs> for quality. And there again, there's so much misinformation about, oh, we're the only vitamin company that is USP. Well, that isn't even real. I mean, a standardized process doesn't necessarily, or or we're listed in the pharmacopoeia, or, or all these things that are just thrown out there to try, try to legitimize a, a specific product or a specific brand or whatever. That's not really the way, you, what you need to see is, first of all, you almost need a degree <coughs> in this. I, I went to, Eight years of quote unquote medical school, I went through the exact same process that every medical doctor goes through, not once, but twice. And all, and I do mean all, of my real nutritional education came postgraduate. All of it. Mm -hmm then that's not saying anything against the institutions or the education process. It's just that this is not part of it. This is not part of medicine. This is something completely different. You do not learn nutrition in medical school at all. So you can't really expect your medical doctor to give you that advice unless they have a whole bunch of postgraduate certifications in nutrition. So, though, you mentioned USP, and for our listeners, it's U.S. Pharmacopeia, which is a book which scientists, like myself, uh, I was an analytic chemist at some point in my life to make a little few extra bucks, uh, but I would use the USP to analyze um, drugs that were brought into our office to see whether they were at the standard that it was set on the label. It doesn't say, though, a whole lot about the product, if it's absorbed or not, whether you put you swallow it or whether you put it on your skin. Yeah. So that, that becomes you, the dilemma in trying to get these products into our system. And there are ways of lying about it, too. Yeah, and yeah, sometimes, sometimes I, I don't do. want to I, I don't want to believe that people are intentionally misleading their they are. they are. Okay, all right. I'll, I'll, I'll say it straightforward. In order to make money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just look at all the, the commercials truth. that our seniors are exposed to. They want to watch the news in the evening, but yet, you know, boom, all of a sudden, you know, th you know, jellyfish must be smart because I see all these commercials that they've extracted something from jellyfish that will help with your memory. And I just find that astounding that jellyfish have been that smart for such a long time. Yeah, I don't know anything about that. <laughs> mm. Right, Barb? You've seen yes, that. I've seen that. That's jellyfish, true. I've okay. seen it. 
right, I don't know. Um, I, I there's probably a great market of harvesting jellyfish and uh, quite a bit profitable market for it. It's so. probably something bio identical. I don't. I wouldn't want to touch jellyfish. I don't know anything about here. it. Uh, it's just these commercials, and of course, you know, they're trying to influence your your thinking, and as if we're not thinking. And uh, but you know, it, I. It gets to the point where I almost hesitate to eat fish anymore with all of the garbage that goes in into the ocean. The ocean. Yeah. yeah. How do you I, know that? I mean, it, it's yeah. all blended together and diluted mm -hmm. together, so you're going to get micro particles from somewhere that could be off the coast of sure. one of these countries that's dumping uh, insoluble metals into it, and all of a sudden you got mercury poisoning. That's, yeah. Well, that's, that's what you hear. On frequent occasions, mm -hmm. yeah. really, I, it, it's it's, it's very not a big issue for me because I'm vegetarian. But I know I am a very small portion of the population in being that. But when we can get back, I can talk about the challenges that we face nutritionally, and if you are going to just try to do it with regular food, some better options for people than others. Um, certainly, you absolutely pay more both with your wallet and with your health when convenience is the most important aspect of what you're shopping for. I agree with you. And yep. we need to take a break, right? I'm Barbara Carquin with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, KHTS. The best live theater can be found right here in the Santa Clarita Valley. The Canyon Theater Guild has been entertaining audiences for decades with top quality musicals and plays. Located on Main Street in Old Town Newhall, CTG also offers workshops for the young actor in your family. For more information, call the box office at 799-2702 or go online to canyontheater.org. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one advanced audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. Who says fun is just for weekends? Come live it every day at Skyline, a new kind of master plan community with indoor and outdoor lifestyle amenities perched in the beautiful hills of Santa Clarita with nearly 1,600 acres of open space, also known as your new backyard. Prices start in the mid 500s. Come for our grand opening event November 3rd with live performances, food trucks, craft beer, and model tours. RSVP at lifeatskyline.com. Join us November 3rd and get a taste of life wide open. Santa Clarita's hometown station. Now FM, 98.1 FM and AM 1220, your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Dr. Jean Dorio with my co-host Barbara Cochran on your hometown station, KHTS. We're talking with Dr. Thomas Pilecki, and an interesting conversation because, you know, I think the three of us agree that environmentally we are being poisoned. Yeah. And some of the diseases that we are getting is caused by it's man-made. Mm -hmm. We just can't decipher and figure out there's no U.S. pharmacopoeia to, to let us uh, dissect through any of this. So uh, what are the options that our seniors who are listening for them to look at in terms of what they're going to take, what's going to help them, and what might harm them? Well, it's I'm go I try to make it as easy as possible for myself, mm -hmm. if not for anybody else, mm -hmm. because there was a time when I was taking up a whole cabinet of supplements, and I know most people couldn't afford that, and most people, even if they could afford it, would not be interested in doing that. And I looked at it, and, and it was just so overwhelming that I, I, I was like, there's got to be a better option. There's got to be a better option than this for everybody. So I've limited what supplements I personally take down to what I think is um, you just can't get it from food alone. 
And we can talk about that for a little in a little bit, but I'd, I'd like to start with what foods are going to make your life a whole lot easier before we get into the, the supplementation the that you're yeah. going mm -hmm. to need in order to stay as healthy as possible. Uh, the original doctor that me Western medicine is based on did it all with food and supplements as we call them today. There was none, there was no uh, alchemy or uh, pharmaceuticals uh, in 2,000 years ago when uh, Hippocrates was working on people. So what I'm doing now is the closest thing to <laughs> real medicine what how it how the father of medicine modern medicine practiced over 2000 years ago so food let's start with food here's the hardest challenge faced most of this audience is going to be dealing with some degenerative process that is totally surrounded by inflammation Inflammation is the root of nearly every senior disease process. It's linked to, it's, it's part of every single disease process. But if you were able to eliminate the right components of elimination, of uh, inflammation, and I'm not saying, oh, we'll just take aspirin because as we know, Aspirin has fallen off the most favored list of take uh, baby aspirin every day to avoid mm -hmm. a heart attack. Uh, I never bought into that. I knew it was just marketing, but several doctors just went along with it because they saw all the research that was manufactured to support it. Mm -hmm. And now time has proven that that is not the case. Manufactured yeah. oh, yes. to support oh, it. Oh, yes. That is a key word. Yeah. It but really it, it is. wasn't several doctors. It was the whole medical establishment. Yeah. Every, every, every doctor said that. <laughs> well, <coughs> medical. Classically trained medical doctor. <laughs> yep, yep, that's what I never, mean. I never bought into it. Mm -hmm. Not once. I was like, yeah, okay. How much did Bear make on this one? <laughs> mm -hmm. Who is now in real trouble because they just acquired Monsanto, and a, a judge has finally admitted openly that well, Monsanto causes cancer. So now the one of their major profit centers is going to mm -hmm. be tied up in litigation for a while. Mm. So that uh, that across uh, uh, apart from everything else. So what are we talking about when we're talking about inflammation? It is a major component of every disease process that every single senior is being treated for right now. And, of course, the easy answer would, well, just take an anti-inflammatory. Take something like an aspirin, an ibuprofen, a naproxen, or whatever. However, they are all just going to address one particular component of inflammation and probably not the one that's causing the damage, just the one that's causing pain. So there's several. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I think there's something like 23 different molecules involved in inflammation and they all do something either good or bad some some inflammation is actually good it's part of the healing process but a lot of them do bad stuff and no medication out there handles all of it none of it mm -hmm. so what do we do to avoid inflammation well number one is hydrate number two is oxygenate which means moving getting the tissue moving getting the circulation flowing moving around as much as you can stand if people's joints are just totally m blown out and destroyed by inflammation there are still options for them we have a whole program that we teach people who can't walk who can't are stuck in you know a wheelchair or even in bed that at least you can still get circulation into the extremities. You can still get your heart rate up mm -hmm. by certain movements that they can do. So there's hydration, there's oxygenation, and then there's food. And unfortunately, so much of the food that we have is inflammatory. Grains, even if you're not allergic, even if you're not sensitive, 
nearly all commercially processed grain is inflammatory. Even to somebody who has no sensitivity to it. Interesting. And it, v it varying degrees. Uh, we now have good science to show that if it's commercially processed grain, and I'll get into that in a moment, that someone who has no indicator, no genetic predisposition, no measurable sensitivity or allergy to any of the components of the grain will measure a inflammatory response when exposed to grains. And it can be severe. It can be as bad as any of the diseases. It's just that those disease markers don't show up for that individual. So mm -hmm. then the doctor's like, well, no, all the tests came back negative. And then what do you do? Well, we're going to put you on anti We're going to put you on steroids. We're going to put you on you know, this, that, or the other and you know, hope for the best. And the problem is, well, you're missing the point. It's that the grains are the issue even though you don't have the test to show it. Now, when you're talking about grains, you're talking about foods that are processed. But, you know, if you go to a store and buy grain like breakfast mm -hmm. cereals, yeah, that's you, know, the, you know, they're all packaged and processed. Sure. Uh, other grains are in a can that is lined with some kind of something to affect uh, that could affect the body. Other mm -hmm. people are have it in cans or bottles, mm -hmm. uh, plastics and things like that. Right. So there's an added, as well as the grains causing problems, you've now added on other things that could be inflammatory that could affect the Absolutely. human body. Absolutely. And unfortunately, every processed food now has some component that's ma vitamins. Those vitamins, that those bargain vitamins are largely processed out of some derivative of grain. They're, they go through the whole chemical workshop and but it started off in most cases as genetically modified corn Interesting. and then they do a whole bunch of things in the laboratory to get a specific synthetic vitamin complex out of it you know going back to inflammation um, I have psoriatic arthritis mm -hmm. and um, I have to avoid acidic, acidic vegetables. I can't eat tomatoes. Mm -hmm. Anything that's acidic causes inflammation for me. Well, I don't know whether it does universally or not. Yeah. Chocolate mm -hmm. is another one. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a few different things you're talking about. And again, a lot of things get confusing, even to doctors about the recommendations that they're making. I absolutely can just look at you and say that you shouldn't have tomatoes, but that's got, that's a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. So w the problem is that every form of grain is coated in a, a type of an acid, a phytic acid, a, a, um, that protects the grain and when I talk about grain, rice is a grain, wheat is a grain, corn is a grain, mm -hmm. barley, oats is a grain. Most of what we eat on every single meal is grain-based. Mm -hmm. And drink like in beer. Okay. Well, what th here's the interesting thing. The process. Fermentation. The process that alcohol goes through eliminates a lot of the inflammatory components in mm. grains. So that's kind that's of interesting. interesting. I is. have patients who can't go near any grain products but can have beer, and mm -hmm. it doesn't affect them, can have distilled spirits. Mm -hmm. And you would think that's crazy. I mean, first of all, it's made out of grain, and second of all, it's alcohol. It must, be, right. it must cause a problem. <laughs> <laughs> but the actual process that the grains go through in order to make it break down the inflammatory components. The problem is that the food that we think we're being so good because we're doing gluten-free, we're doing y y you know, these portion controls, we're doing the weight washers, we're doing all of these things, and yet we still have all of these issues. We still have indigestion. We still have bloating. We still have insomnia. 
like all of these things that w well oh well you take this pill for this you if for if your joints hurt you take this pill if you have digestive problems you take this pill if you have sleeping problems you take this pill and it can just be as simple as eliminating grains from your diet interesting and the problem is that that is not any easy task at all people who try to be gluten-free have a lot of options out there but that's more marketing than science maybe i ought to start drinking beer there Dod you go. <laughs> dodger game tonight <laughs> dodger no, game no, perfect excuse <laughs> well i i drink a glass of wine at night uh -huh. well not at night when i eat dinner mm -hmm. i have one glass of white wine and it's chardonnay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so three I ounces three ounces of red wine the white wine, eh, okay. But three ounces of red wine is actually good for your liver. Okay, but, but who's going to drink three ounces? Because that is like a tasting pour. And red wine gives me a headache. Well, mm. there, it, there's other stuff to it. It's I guarantee you it is not the wine. It is the preservatives that all commercial wines have to add in order okay, to improve so their it's shelf life. what's in the wine. Yeah. That is that gives me the headache. So yeah. I stay away from red wine. Yep. Occasionally, I'll pour a, a little bit of red wine into my white wine, mm -hmm. but I'm still not drinking full-blown red wine. Mm -hmm. But I yeah, love my glass I, of wine I, at night. I'm a member I? of uh, three different wineries up in the San Inez Valley because they specifically do not do all of that. Uh, they're private wineries essentially because as soon as uh, a, a anything that's on the shelf has to meet certain criteria or that chain of stores won't buy from the winemaker really so it has to have a shelf life they can't sell spoiled wine so in order to have a shelf life the winemaker has to agree to put certain things in the process in order mm -hmm. to guarantee that this wine is going to be a viable product m maybe for a year or more on the shelf so that the distribution process can be profitable. But as soon as you do that, you're adding more and more chemistry to it and more and more people are going to have some kind of a problem with that. I can't drink commercial wine. I, I can't. Gives you a headache? Yeah. Uh, we go, we, I, I started realizing this when we stayed away, just like you, we stayed away from red wines forever because we just thought, well, red wine just gives you a headache, as most mm. a lot of people do. It's not yeah. the red wine. It's the processing of commercially produced red wines. Well, what's in the red wine that causes the headache? Uh Oh, a lot of people, it can vary, but a lot of people are, are very sensitive to metabisulfite, mm -hmm. which is a, uh, believe, uh, let's just call it a preservative. I think it might be an antifungal. I'm not exactly sure, but metabisulfite uh, is added in, in the process uh, to ensure that there's less spoilage of wines. And the more that they add, it's like MSG for some people. Some people mm -hmm. are going to be real sensitive to MSG, and some people it's not going to affect so much. Mm -hmm. So some people can tolerate commercial wine. Quite uh, Obviously, a lot of people can tolerate commercial wine and metabisulfite. But some people just stay away because they're like, oh, wine gives me a headache. There, Why would I want that? No, I, that's the worst thing in the world is to get a headache. Yeah. And I haven't had a headache in I can't remember when, yeah, it fortunately. Can, can li well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, uh, it can be just a few sips, depending on how sensitive you are. You can literally do one taste of a wine and get a headache if you're sensitive to, let's just say, metabisulfite. There are several things that could be causing a problem. But I know for me, it is the metabisulfite. So, but you drink wine that does not have yeah. it in there, and Barbara should be going with you. Yeah. To some of I these was going to say, when are you going to invite us over <laughs> for dinner? There we'll have go. some of your wine. <laughs> we just came back. I've got a case of excellent Pinot, Pinot Noir. Ken Brown is the man responsible for bringing Pinot Noir to the San Inez Valley, and everybody there just thinks he's a, 
a master because he is and uh we met with him and he's amazing he is a true wine master and uh i i bought a case it's really good there you go bring a bottle next show i'll yeah. buy a <laughs> bottle of it from you <laughs> See if you get ahead no, or not. next Wednesday. Yeah, I'll buy, I'll buy a yeah, bottle from you. Yeah, it's exceptional. It's exceptional. First of all, um, Pinot is a great transitional wine because it doesn't have a big bite. It's not. It what do you mean a transitional wine? What does to that go word from mean? a white into reds? So oh, you're not. Okay. You're not like oh ugh, I don't like this because a lot of reds are too big. They have too much something in them yeah, they have they too are, much tannin which harsh it, it's harsh it's yeah. bitter it's bold it's stinging it's there's an aftertaste but pinot is a great transitional wine um it's got one of the lowest residual sugars so it's actually good for you it's one of the healthiest wines there is and as i said ken brown is just the, a masterful winemaker, and he specializes in Pinot Noir. Interesting. Well, we need to take a break, and we'll get back to talking about Pinot Noir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, KHTS. Come join me, Arif Halvey, for Total Financial Solutions Safer Money Hour. Every Tuesday at noon, we uncover ways to help you manage your money, get out of debt, and prepare for your retirement. That's every Tuesday at noon on Total Financial Solutions Safer Money Hour. Are you not sure if you can retire yet? Listen to us and learn about tips for savings, retirement strategies, and so much more. That's every Tuesday at noon on Total Financial Solutions Safer Money Hour on your hometown station, KHTS. Vargas is back with another amazing new show. Don't miss this swashbuckling circus spectacular Dreaming of Pirates under the Big Top in Santa Clarita at Westfield Valencia Town Center October 25th through 29th. It's family entertainment at its finest. Guaranteed to thrill and enchant children of all ages. Come discover a world of pure circus magic where memories are made and cherished for a lifetime. See death-defying acrobats, daredevils, trapeze artists, jugglers, clowns, motorcycles, and much, much more. All under the big top. Don't miss Circus Vargas' Dreaming of Pirates. Buy your tickets now at CircusVargas.com. The big one is back. Circus Vargas, Circus Vargas, Circus Vargas. The biggest big top is back. Circus Vargas, Circus Vargas, Circus Vargas. Today for lunch, why not try The Sandwich Shop? Located on Avenue Stanford in Valencia, The Sandwich Shop offers dozens of hot or cold, affordable, premium deli sandwiches. Gourmet soups and salads are also available. Regulars indulge in the Dutch crunch roll on the twice-baked baguettes, which is a customer favorite. Top it off with owner Charlie Chong's chunky chocolate chip cookie. Breakfast and catering is also available. The Sandwich Shop, since 1983, located on Avenue Stanford, right off Rye Canyon. ValenciaSandwichShop.com to place your order. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one Advanced Audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. Now FM, 98.1 FM, and AM 1220, your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Carkin with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, KHTS. And we're talking with Dr. Thomas Palucky, who is... Not only a chiropractor, but a nutritionist and yeah. well, all I, kinds of... Well, I have to be careful about that. I'm not a nutritionist. Officially, you yeah, aren't. I, I am a certified um, functional medicine practitioner, and I am a certified practitioner of functional diagnostic nutrition. Mm -hmm. That's what my credentials will support. Mm -hmm. um, nutritionists or doctors of nutrition or dietitians or that have a very special education process mm. that I, I did not you go did through. Not are they related through. to nationalists? 
I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. Barbara knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Just a sidelight okay. of everything. We were um, also, during our break, we were talking about how I don't drink wine. And, you know, I, so I did, therefore don't get a headache from what I drink, but I do drink a, a, um, uh, a, uh, because I exercise, you know, for 50 years, you know, I've been using the same product as they change the names. I've transitioned from one flavor to another. Mm -hmm. And of course I, some of the coloring in it, uh, like grape, uh, you know, I felt that, you know, if you spilled it anywhere it would stain whatever you spilled it on so what is it doing to your stomach and your body right so i realized that and i've written to this company uh and said take the take the coloring out and they've resisted but of they've course. lightened things up a little bit so mm -hmm. i when i'm drinking some of these products now they've they're lighter and when we were back in uh, nashville the other week they had a product there that i really liked from them and they've responded. They said, we're sending it out to California, and I, I got it here. That's so, awesome. um, you know, it's, it, it, does it keep me healthy? No, I'm afraid. You know, we were reading, because I have some here in, the, in, the, in our uh, station here, and, you know, it looks pretty bad, <laughs> you know, the stuff that, and is it causing inflammation? Well, people will say that Dr. Dorio in Santa Clarita is very inflammatory. Yeah. And, and because, though <laughs> I don't think go. it's having an effect on me at least, <laughs> and unfortunately Maybe an effect on others, an effect on, on others, on others that's go. right. <laughs> so, but I don't drink wine, I just drink these, uh, these sports supplements. And uh, you know, I've gotten away with right now, so, but if I'm not here next week, you guys will there know it finally, you know it finally we'll took know me. Why. <laughs> you know why. That won't happen. That won't happen. But, you know, you're a <laughs> nutritionalist, but not. But we talk about nutrition, and, you know, we talk about how we are being poisoned, and a lot of it is in, inflammatory, and mm -hmm. some of it is autoimmune in nature that, where that inflammation is coming from. Well, autoimmune is a tricky business. Yep, what absolutely. My understanding of autoimmune, again, starts with inflammatory foods. Yes. Oh, that's the link. Yeah. So mm -hmm. let's just pick phytic acid, which is the coating on uh, most vegetables, most grains. And if it's commercially processed, they do nothing to strip away that coating. And it's pretty simple. All you have to do is sprout it. Any grain, any nut, any seed, and most fruits and vegetables should be soaked overnight to begin the sprouting process. If you begin the sprouting process, you essentially wipe out the phytic acid. It's there as the plant's reproductive protection. If it's a seed, let's just say it's a seed or a, a nut or a, a grain is a seed, essentially a seed. It's just a different classification. So a grain of corn, um, a kernel, it's coated with this phytic acid. Why? Because it upsets the stomach of the crows. It upsets the stomach of the worm. It upsets the stomach of the bacteria, of the mold, of whatever. The human? Might of, well, that's just it. It's the protection, the, in, the internal protection, the natural protection to make sure that at least some of those seeds are going to make new plants. Hmm. Now, ancient cultures figured this out thousands of years ago. If you have any Middle Eastern friends, they will not put nuts out that haven't been soaked overnight. The um, you'll, you'll grab a couple almonds and they'll... Um, they won't feel right. They won't taste quite right for our, you know, our palate. They're like, what's, ew, is this, is this stale? Is this, you mm -hmm. know, what is this? And it's because they have known for thousands of years that if you don't soak a nut overnight, it can cause digestive problems. Their, they've, their culture just mandates it. Interesting. But it's because but of it's phytic because acid. But it's because a real long time ago when we were all about uh, 
growing food and natural processes, we were much more aware of us. But now that we don't have to grow our own food, in fact, very few people do, and we certainly, most of us, don't go out and hunt down our food. It's all yeah. in a nice That's little right. plastic container or mm-hmm. cardboard container that comes to us, and we don't have to think anything about it. We're so removed from that process that if we do have an upset stomach, if we do have a, an ache or a pain after eating something, if we do have a headache or we don't sleep normally that night, we don't think, oh, well, maybe we should look at that. We just look at the commercial and say, oh, well, oh, that's the pill I take for that. Or maybe I should ask my doctor about why I have indigestion or why I can't sleep or why I'm, you know, moody. A or lot of it mm-hmm. has to do It's with all food to do. If eat. people started just paying more attention to the foods, they'd have to pay a lot less attention to the political campaigns about who's going to pay for health care. Mm-hmm. Well, now... I've started eating or more organic foods. Are they healthier for you than the regular stuff? You know, especially vegetables. In general, vegetables. I believe there are. It's vegetables. a little hard. Uh, I mean, the people will argue about that, but I don't believe there's any argument. The closer you get to the natural process, the less problems you're going to have. It doesn't mean that you have you don't still have to pay attention to how you process that just because it's organic doesn't wipe out the phytic acid you can have an organic Mm -hmm. nut that has a lot of phytic acid on it Mm -hmm. and unless you soak it overnight then you're still going to be exposed to that portion of it it's still going to be inflammatory it doesn't matter whether Mm -hmm. it's organic or not so I don't think we have organic nuts here in the studio. But <laughs> did, if they want, people want to get a hold of you, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, the office number is 753-9340. Great. Thank you for being on the show. Very controversial. We are sponsored by Comfort Keepers in Home Care <laughs> and Advanced Audiology. Listen to us next week on the Senior Hour. Now go and enhance your quality of life. <laughs>